Okay, these are the solutions for the potential paper I posted a few days ago. Uh, question 1a, we have to prove, so cot theta minus tan theta equals to cos theta over sine theta minus sine theta over cos theta, which is the same as cos squared minus sine squared over sine theta cos theta. I'm just doing the common denominator there. Now cos squared minus sine squared is the same as cos 2 theta, and sine theta cos theta is the same as half sine 2 theta. So when we divide cos 2 theta over sine 2 theta, that's cot 2 theta, and 1 over half is 2 as required. Now part B is to solve the equation. So cot theta minus tan theta is 5. So obviously we've proven that 2 cot theta is equal to 5 from part A. And also look on the right hand side, I've got sort of the limit. So theta is between minus pi and pi, so 2 theta will be between minus 2 pi and plus 2 pi. Be minus 2 pi. Okay. <coughs> So cot 2 theta is 5 over 2, so tan 2 theta is 2 over 5. So 2 theta is tan inverse of 2 over 5. Now what I've done is I've drawn the tan graph from minus 2 pi to 2 pi, and I've sort of drawn a line across with 2 fifths. And uh, I've shown with arrows all the intersections, there are four intersections. Now you can use the cast diagram, I prefer the graph guys, and uh, I think all the professionals use the graph, so this is how it's done, you can actually see the roots clearly. So 2 theta equals to tan inverse of 2 two fifths, which is 0.38, or pi plus 0.38, or minus pi plus 0.38, or minus 2 pi plus 0.38. So theta becomes 0.19, 1.76, minus 1.38, or 5.90. It's question one. So now question two. Y equals to 3 cos squared x plus cosec 2x. So dy dx is minus 6 cosec sine x, minus 2 cosec x cotex. If you can't do this directly guys, just use the uh, chain rule and you'll get these results. I've done it directly because obviously in the exam situation you don't have to write out the chain rule. Now part A2, y is equal to x ln 3x all squared. So again, I use the chain rule direct. So to 2, 2 from the power comes to the top. And then you differentiate the inside which is 1 plus 1 over x. And then this bit, x plus ln x, ln 3x to the power 1 as required. Now this is a simple quotient rule uh, question part B and it's just simple algebra really. You let u equal to the top, u equal to the bottom. Again when you're differentiating these you might have to use chain rule and you don't really want to open up a long chain rule in the middle of a quotient rule so you've got to do it directly. And use the formula v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared and then you substitute it guys. Uh, I mean what I've done is I've simplified in a certain way. You can follow the steps. If there's anything you don't understand just ask me I'll try to explain it. Okay, so here we go. And then <coughs> question three. Okay, so x is sine 2y plus pi. So dx dy is 2 cos 2y plus pi. Again, it's chain rule. So when x equals to 1, 1 equals to sine 2y plus pi. So sine inverse of 1 equals to 2y plus pi. So pi over 2 equals to 2y plus pi. So minus pi over 2 equals to 2y. So minus pi over 4 equals to y. Now when y equals to minus pi over 4, dx dy equals to 2 cos minus pi over 2 plus pi, because it's 2 times y, which is minus pi over 2. So that is same as 2 cos pi over 2. So cos pi over 2 is 0, so that makes it 0. So dy dx is 1 over 0, which is infinity. So the gradient of normal is 0, because minus 1 over infinity is 0. So it's basically a horizontal line if the gradient is 0, isn't it? So y plus pi over 4 equals to 0 bracket x minus 1. You don't have to do it. You can just write straight away y equals to minus pi over 4. Okay, I kind of use the y minus uh, y1 and bracket x minus x1 with the gradient 0. You don't have to do it. Question 4. So x equals cos x squared 2y. So the first question is dx dy. Now again, I've kind of written the chain rule at the top right corner there. You can see let u equals to cos x 2y and you get that. And then x equals u squared, you get that. And when you multiply the two things together, you get minus 4 cos x squared 2y cot 2y. So dy dx is minus 1 over 4 cos x squared 2y cot 2y. So now, we're going to replace that. So cos x squared 2y is x, so we can put that x in there safely. Now to get the cot 2y, so remember x equals cos x squared 2y, so x equals 1 plus cot squared 2y using the identity. 
So square root of x minus 1 equals to cot 2y. Now I can put that into the main equation and I can get that. Now I know my question is slightly wrong. So this is the correct answer you have to prove. Okay, part c. So dy dx is equal to minus 1 over 4x, x minus 1 to the half. So what I did is I put this x inside the bracket. So that becomes minus 1 over 4x cubed minus x squared. When you put this back into a square root, you have to go in as a square. So when you include this x inside the bracket, it goes in as x squared. So it'll be x cubed minus x squared when you multiply the x minus 1. Now what I did is I brought that to the top. So it's minus 1 over 4, x cubed minus x squared to the minus half. And then I just used the chain rule. So d squared y over dx squared equals to 1 over 8, 3x, 3x squared minus 2x. Oops, that is a little mistake there. So that is 2, that is 2. Okay, that's fine. And then x cubed minus x squared minus 3 over 2. And what I did is I took the x... I took the minus 3 over 2 to the bottom and also I factorized the x out from both parts. So if you take x out from the top, so it would be x bracket 3x minus 2. And at the bottom, if you take x squared out and when you square root it, it becomes that actually it's actually not correct. So I have to rewrite this. So let me just rewrite this actually because this is not a half. So this is a bit different. Um, so there is a mistake in this question actually. Mm. So we cross this out and we will leave that as the answer. Okay. So that's the answer. Okay, now question five. Fx equals 2x minus 1 and x is a real number and x is greater than 0. So inverse function. So let y equal 2x minus 1. When you rearrange it, you get f inverse of x is x plus 1 over 2. Now the bit that a lot of people are confused about. Now what I do, there are two ways of doing this. You can either sketch a graph or you could do this. Now we know x is greater than 0, so that makes 2x greater than 0. And 2x minus 1 greater than minus 1. Now 2x minus 1 is a function f, so that means f of x is greater than minus 1. So the domain of f inverse is same as the range of f. That means x is greater than minus 1 is the domain of f inverse. <coughs> now g of x. So g of x is equal to x over x plus 1. So why did I use long division to divide it? So it's x divided by x plus 1 is basically 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. And um, when x equals to minus 1, y is infinity. And when y is equal to 1, x is infinity. And when x equals to 0, y is equal to 0. So it's, it's a graph like this. Obviously, we have a restriction in the function that g of x is greater than minus 1. So because of that, this section of the graph is crossed out. Okay, if you left that on, you probably lose a couple of marks. So I crossed it out. Okay. Now, so that's the graph. Now, f, g of f of quarter. So if you work out f of quarter first, that works out to be minus half. And you, to get g of f of quarter, that is same as g of minus half, which is basically minus 1. And part d, let y equals to x over x plus 1. So x equals to y plus 1, sorry, y over y plus 1. So rearrange it and get y equals minus x over x minus 1, which is same as x over minus x. You just times both up and down by minus. So g inverse of x is x over 1 minus x. Now again, we need to get the domain of the uh, g inverse. So now the domain of g inverse is the same as the range of the graph g. You can quite clearly see the range here is less than 1. So the domain here is x less than 1. Because the range of g is same as domain of g inverse. Okay, so that's question 5. Now question 6. Question 6 is the exponential question. So n is equal to 600 over 5 plus 7 e to the minus 1 over 4 t. So when t equals to 0, n equals to a. So a is equal to 50 when you plug it in. And now we need to work out when the pond width will be 75. So what I did is I first rearranged it. When you rearrange it using these steps, you can see t is t equals 4 ln 7 n over 600 minus 5 n. And when is n equals to 75, t is equal to 3.39 which is fourth month. Now um, some people might plug in from the beginning but I prefer to rearrange it and then plug it in. I mean if you plug it in you probably still have to do the same amount of work but it'd be a bit tricky with the numbers involved. 
Okay, part C. So as t tends to infinity, e to the minus quarter t goes to zero. So five plus seven e to the minus quarter t goes to five. So six hundred over five plus seven e to the quarter t goes to six hundred over five, which is one twenty. So as t tends to infinity, n goes to one twenty. So my capital N is one hundred and twenty. Okay, now we go to the last question, which is the modulus question, guys. Okay, so y equals to modulus of 3x and y equals to modulus of x minus a. So you uh, sketch it like this. Okay, I'm not going to go through this. This is a very easy sketch. And then you solve it. So you can clearly see from the graph, the negative section of the modulus of x minus a graph crosses both parts of modulus of 3x. So what I did is I did 3x equals to minus uh, x minus a and minus 3x equals to minus x minus a. And I solve it like that. You get x equals a over 4 and x equals to minus half a. So it's always good to look at the graph and see which sections are intersecting and solve those rather than just solving randomly. Part C, y equals to 2 modulus of x plus 1. So I just use when x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 to get the points and I sketched it here. And I also sketch y equals 2 minus x which is a graph going straight down. Now you can see there's a there's a potential intersection at x equals to 0 and possibly one on the right uh, left hand side. So what, I don't know whether this intersecting probably is. So let's just see. So it's 2 minus x equal to 2 times x plus 1 or 2 minus x equal to minus 2 times x plus 1. And then I actually get x equal to 0 and x equal to minus 4. So that's the potential paper, guys. Uh, good luck for exam tomorrow. I, I was going to write another paper. Unfortunately, I don't have time now. I will write a C4 paper very soon.